have Linda White Wolf, and you're watching another edition of Arizona Native News. Today, I have a very special guest for you. You know, we cover a lot of cultural events and things going on here in Arizona, but once in a while, I have someone very special to introduce to you. Today, I have just that person, a Native man that has made such a difference that he is known internationally. He's also Chickasaw from the Chickasaw Nation, just like me, and He's also a spaceman. Yes, a spaceman. I'd like to introduce, and thank you so much for coming today, Commander John Harrington. My pleasure. Thanks, Linda. So, John, when you were a little guy growing up in Arizona, did you, like, watch Jetsons, look up at the sky and say, I want to be up there? Or how does, how does an American Indian guy growing up in a rural part of, of Oklahoma get to where you've been. Well, when I, was in, I was born in Oklahoma back uh, in 1958. My parents uh, lived in Tulsa. We lived in Norman for a little bit, but I moved to Colorado when I was about a year old. So I pretty much grew up in Colorado. Okay. I grew up in Wyoming, grew up in Texas. But when I was about eight years old, I used to sit in a cardboard box in Black Forest, Colorado mm -hmm. and dream I was going to the moon. But, uh, you know, and I thought I'd get there, you know. And what has this journey been for you? Uh, it's uh, been a really windy road, actually. You know, there's, uh, I moved a lot as a kid uh, by the time I graduated from high school. I Are you from a military family? No, not at all. No, my, my folks moved a lot. My dad changed jobs a lot in engineering, and, and we ended up from one place to the next. And then by the time that I uh, was going to college, I didn't really know what I wanted to do. And my parents encouraged me to go to college because no, we have some We have some graphics up here that um, are pretty internationally known. Um, <laughs> Talk a little bit about your experience here with NASA because those sure. are just, those are fabulous pictures. Well, the, the pictures in the suit, we were trained, anytime you do a spacewalk, you train for a spacewalk, you do anywhere from seven to 10 hours in the pool for every hour of spacewalk. So I did about 20 hours of spacewalk. So What's the pool? The math. There's a large pool in Houston, Texas called the, the a Neutral Buoyancy Lab, NBL. And that is about a 40 foot deep pool, 100, 100 feet wide, 200 feet long. And it's, uh, they have the, almost the entire structure of the space station underwater. And so you will go down in the suit, neutrally buoyant, and actually learn how to do your tasks. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I mean, you're the first American Indian to, to be in the space program like that. And, and I know that you have inspired so many young, young Native people today to get into science and engineering, um, what would you say are, are your passions in, in, in that realm? I think it comes down to somebody that, you know, there, I had a mentor, I had, had people that motivated me. I, wanted, I didn't do very well in school initially because I wasn't motivated. No way. Did, yeah, no. You weren't very, big in yes math way, either? Yes, I was, wasn't <laughs> big in math, I wasn't big in study, and I learned how to, I spent my time rock climbing. And the time I spent rock climbing, I didn't study, obviously. And you don't study, you don't pass tests. <laughs> and, and actually, I kicked school. You're not out supposed school. to say that. You're supposed to say you're no, students no. the whole time. No, it's, it's, <laughs> a, it's a story. And it's, it's the fact that there's a lot of folks that aren't motivated. They're smart and they're intelligent, but they're not motivated. And that was certainly my case. And I, but I had people that motivated me, encouraged me. I had a guy convince me to go back to school. I had a guy convince me to join the Navy. And if it hadn't been for those folks, I never would have been, had the opportunity to do this. So you believe in mentoring? Yep, very much. Very are much you so. are you mentoring, or what organizations are you working with now? Well, here in Phoenix, right now, this week, we're uh, celebrating it's our 29th year for the American Indian Science and Engineering Society. Uh, I was on the board of directors a few years ago, and this year, myself and Carla Chief are the uh, spokespeople for really the 30th anniversary. So over this next year, we're really going to encourage people to uh, get interested in ACES, find out what ACES is, mm -hmm. because what it does, it takes Native uh, American Native students, but Alaska Natives, Native Americans. Kids are interested in math and science, and that's what this Perfect. is all about. You're, you're, you have embarked on a brand new project called Rocket Plane. Plane, <laughs> and this is a company that you're vice president of in uh, in Oklahoma. And please take a few minutes to talk about this because I tell you, I want a discount. I want to be the first on that <laughs> orbital space station Jetson type of plane, or actually sure. talk about it. And we're going to have some graphics up here sure. as well. Well, what it is, it's a uh, it's a rocket plane. Essentially, that's what it is. It is an aircraft that takes off from a runway. It has a rocket engine in the back, about 36,000 pound oh, thrust rocket engine. It. You can see it. That's so Jetsons. <laughs> you can't see Astro the dog there. But, um, you know, the, the intent is to be able to fly paying passengers in space and space tourism. And what we'll do, you can see we started off initially with a Lear fuselage was our basis. We recently unveiled a new configuration. It's a much larger vehicle. We're going to carry six people total instead of four. And it's going to take off and land under its own power and uh, fly to about 62 miles in space. 62 miles yeah. up in space, yeah. and 
from that bird's eye view, I mean, what is it you really see? It's about 700 to 1,000 mile footprint that you can be able to see. We're going to take off out of Burns Flat, Oklahoma. Actually, Oklahoma has the very first licensed spaceport in the United States that, that utilizes the, the, air, the airspace system, national airspace system. And we'll take off to about to fly out to the northwest, uh, out over uh, Kansas. You'll be able to see the Rocky Mountains, probably back about Santa Fe. If you look down to the southeast, you could probably make out the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, it's a pretty big footprint. It really is. And, and is there a already a price tag on this yeah, uh, seat? We have $200,000 initially is what the price is going to be. The first 50 flights going to be a little bit more because we have a, what they call founders flights, folks that really want to get involved early on. Uh, the right seat is in the front. you got the front view and everything. So there's a... There's a oh, there's a better, there. yeah. better side of Especially the plane? Especially depends plane. on what you want. Some people may not want to be in the, the right front. Some people may want to be in the... Uh, we have four seats in the rear, so... It's uh, going to be an interesting ride. And the whole idea is for the week that we fly is it's going to be a team effort. You know, people come out not just to experience the idea of flying in space, but what it takes to get there and the people that build the vehicle and, and the training. So we're making this whole whole experience that uh, all comes together and they can take that back home with them. That is fantastic. You know, um, I, I wonder our moon, the, our project, our moon, the moon exploration. Mm -hmm here in America has really kind of come to a halt, though I've been reading that China and Japan are really looking towards space exploration and, and, and maybe going back to the moon. Uh, what do you foresee as our future here in space? Sure. Well, you know, the United States and Russia for the longest time were the only two countries in the world that flew people in space. Now, China has recently done that, and China has said they would go to the moon within a certain period of time. Uh, the president came out and set a new vi vision for exploration, which is let's go back to the moon, let's go to Mars at some point in time. The space station is a phenomenal thing, and it's, it's enabled us to build uh, equipment that can stay you know, for five, six, seven years. You know, we had a permanent presence in space for seven years now. So wow. we, have, we have things in space that are flowing, flying there for a long time, and that's what we need if we go to Mars, and so it's that next extension of, of exploration. So if they, they called you up, if uh, NASA called you up one day and said, hey, John, we're going to go back to the moon. You want to come on down? Where's my cell phone? <laughs> Would you? <laughs> is that something you'd yeah. like to do? Yeah, you know, it was only things that, at what, what point in time, though? What, what's my age going to be? Is what is the age limit for an astronaut? You know, there's really not an age limit for an astronaut. It's just based on your, well, your they health age limits and everything. For, so. for commercial pilots. Well, you can look at it, too, because we're, we're not flying, we're not flying paying pastures, and NASA is not flying paying pastures in space. That's true. So the idea is, you know, you have to be physically fit and health. There's, there's, there's physical issues that you have to comply with to be on space station. And uh, I could talk about that's a long story. But, uh, you know, we're going to uh, have to have yeah. another conversation on this. And I so appreciate you taking taking time to come here out of your very busy schedule. And, and want to honor for the Chickasaw Nation, for American Indians, and just for Americans. Woohoo! <laughs> and right up next, you're going to see what you can do in Indian country, right in your own backyard. Have a great day.